we run uh, we run much like bird runs uh, on on desire, not so much in being fleet of foot, so to speak. And and that's what we try and do with all our people: just get them to run, get them in the best possible physical condition you can be in. Patino's big star is Billy Donovan, who relies on sheer guts and the three-point shot. Billy Donovan is a. a is someone who's gone from, uh, I think, in, uh, someone they called CYO Bill, someone who should be a Division II program, to Billy the Kid Donovan, someone right now is one of the premier guards in the country. Donovan for three. He got another one. He's three for three. We've watched him come from, uh, from a slow guard uh, who has quickness, always had quickness, but never had speed, to now someone who has speed and quickness. And you don't want to have to guard Billy Donovan in the middle of the floor on the break because you could twist your ankles going in different directions. He has, he's that clever. Bob Knight contributed to the Flyer success by giving up on Del Ray Brooks, who then transferred to Providence, where Rick Pitino quickly put him to work. His confidence was low, his self-esteem was very low, but Delray Brooks had, had, he was a positive thinker, he had confidence in his ability, and he had to lose, everybody speaks about Billy Dunneman's weight loss, Delray Brooks had to lose 25 pounds. He came in, uh, I accused him of drinking too much uh, Miller Lights, but uh, he, he said he didn't drink any beer, so then I was worried about that. During the regular season, Providence and Georgetown met three times, with the Friars winning once. Patino stood up for his team, winning the respect of John Thompson. You've got to realize any time you can beat Alabama the way they beat Alabama, and Alabama's an outstanding team, that you're talking about a good team. You're not talking Cinderella. Yeah, Cinderella's already gone home. But behind the personal victories was a man hiding a private tragedy. His newborn son was sick from birth, and two weeks ago, Daniel Patino died at the age of six months. If you lose a parent or you lose anyone in your life that's a, it's a loved one, it's a devastating thing for you. And the only thing that can carry on, words of encouragement are nice, but your faith is the only thing that can carry on from that point. It's going to be with us for a lifetime, Tom, but I think what's happened uh, with us, for my wife and family, is the basketball right now has been a tremendous distraction where it cuts down your, your crying time and it cuts down your time. And you think about it every moment of the day, but at least you're distracted. And when it does end, that's when, obviously, you come to grips with the 24 hours. But uh, I know my son Daniel right now is, is upstairs uh, helping us along this, and I think he's a big part of us victories. Okay, the court wizardry of Ernie D. Ernie D. Gregorio. He was a little man, and Marvin Barnes was the big man on Providence's team. John Thompson, the Georgetown coach, played for the Friars in the mid-60s, and that team was captain by a man named Ray Flynn, who's the current mayor of Boston. Who's to Providence because he knew that if he was successful there, he would have the student support and the support of the city. Last game for Randy Williams, 25 points. We'll be seeing an awful lot of him in the future. Guaranteed, Reggie Williams. Someone's got to go home, you lose one and you're gone, and when the underdog wins, it's an extra special feeling. And it's got to be an extra special feeling for a team like Providence that has really risen rapidly in the Big East, which is a very tough conference indeed. Villanova didn't make the NCAA tournament, they were champs a couple of years ago. I don't think this is a Cinderella team, I agree with John Thompson. what it's all about. Three-point shot by Tillman, no good. Providence does it. The big upset, 88-73, they're going to New Orleans.
them in the final four. The Chevy MVPs for Providence, Daryl Wright. And you see Providence advancing on, and Daryl Wright is the Chevy MVP for the Friars. Reggie Williams completing his remarkable career with Georgetown. Coming up, University of North Carolina will be taking on Syracuse for the East Regional Championship. We'll get to that after this word from your local station. The freewheeling Di Gregorio had almost single-handedly taken his team to victories in the Eastern Region over Pennsylvania and Maryland. And against the Tigers, the six-foot guard immediately took charge, scoring the Friars' first field goal and passing for another in the first minute of play. It was only natural that a number of people in the St. Louis crowd couldn't quite believe what they were seeing as Di Gregorio constantly befuddled the Tiger defense with his court sleight of hand and led Providence into an early 18-12 lead. Meanwhile, Memphis State's two big men, number 35 Larry Keenan and number 33 Ronnie Robinson, gave the Tigers enough scoring punch to keep them within reach. But the Friars had their own stellar big man in 6'8 center Marvin Barnes, who battled the Memphis front line underneath while hitting four out of his first five shots. With Barnes hitting from the inside and Di Gregorio scoring from all over the court, Providence appeared headed into the finals. But Fortune wasn't smiling on the front. With 12 and a half minutes left to go in the first half, a fall under the basket sent Barnes to the bench with a sprained knee. Providence coach Dave Gavitt called timeout. I want you to anticipate now the possibility of going to the four defense. All right, if we go to the four defense, you're going to play cook man to man. You're going to play bench man to man. All right? All right? Yeah. You'll still be on the point. You guys are going to be in the triangle zone. You're still going to have the point. So you don't play anybody high. So you'll be dropped back. While you're Providence back tried up. to improvise an offense it. and a defense that could work four. without the big man, like Coach Gene Bartow of Memphis State was telling his players how to take advantage of the break. We need to be jamming in. Barnes is out of the game. We ought to be able to get right around the net. They're right playing right behind your big man. They're playing right behind him. We can go to these two men right in around the basket. We won't do it. We've got to do it. It can be done. You move it a little patience. We're in this game. We're right in it. Don't let them get that spread anymore. Keep playing. Move it quick. Be ready to jam. Let's go to work. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. They're in a zone, which I think they'll stay in, number one, and jam it in there. Get that good shot, and we're all right. Everybody, you can't be able today. All right. Go, Memphis narrowed the gap when play resumed. Unchecked by Barnes in the middle, Robinson and Keenan combined to score six points that brought the Tigers to within three. But the first half still belonged to Ernie DiGregorio and the Friars. came out for the second half. And facing a team that had lost its big center, the Tigers sank three straight while Providence went scoreless. And Providence coach Gavitt called timeout again. Memphis cut the lead to one before Di Gregorio was able to regain the touch and put his team ahead by three again. Then for the next nine minutes, the two teams battled evenly. But Providence, which had shot for more than 56% in the first half, began to taper off, and the Memphis front line took control of the boards while Marvin Barnes sat on the sidelines. Barnes did manage to get back into the game, but he was hobbling and rather ineffective. Memphis State, meanwhile, took complete charge of the game and outscored Providence 13-1 to in those final minutes to win going away and to advance to the championship game.
<laughs> yeah. Now every, uh, every travel agent in Rhode Island will be on the phone tomorrow morning. But in fact, the entire basketball community was stunned yesterday. And out in Seattle, Jerry Tarkanian was holding a press conference when he learned of that Friars upset victory. Providence by how much? Are you kidding me? Providence by 15? It's a final? Holy cow. Now, if you talk about a celebrity, I'd be Rick Pitino. Yeah, I'd be the mayor of Providence. I'll tell you that right now. Well, there are a lot of other folks who thought the same thing. And as news of the big upset swept through the campus, the students came out and celebrated together. In lieu of confetti, they trimmed the trees with whatever was handy. And after two earlier tough Big East losses to Georgetown, they vented their frustration on a Hoya sweatshirt. Meanwhile, in New Jersey, Syracuse was also lighting it up. Syracuse goes to the Final Four. In central New York, the Orangemen were the toast of Syracuse. And amid the spraying foam, there were kind words for a coach they'd often maligned. Syracuse has got it. No man more deserving of a victory ride than that coach right there. The partying at Syracuse went into the wee hours of the morning, and the delirious fans were convinced they had a winner. Syracuse is a very, very good team. They're the best in the country. They're number one. They're going all the way, and there was no doubt about it ever, ever, ever. Sounds like a history major to me. And speaking of uh, recent history, this year Syracuse took two out of two from Providence during the regular season. All right, when we come back, we'll check in live at Cincinnati with Brent and Billy. Game one today from the Midwest as we continue on the road paper of the tournament. Let's go out to Seattle right now to the guys who opened up the Kingdome, Vern Lundquist and Billy Cunningham. Jim is kind of calm in the cavernous Kingdom in Seattle right now, but by the time we come out west to put the final piece in the puzzle of the Final Four this afternoon, we'll have better than 25,000 raucous fans on hand as UNLV takes on Iowa. Bill, it strikes me that we've seen the top seeds go down in two games yesterday. Is there a chance that top-seeded UNLV could lose today? Absolutely, and Jerry Tarkanian scared to death when he has to face that trap of Iowa. He hasn't seen that trap for a year and a half now, and the last time they saw it was against Tom Davis when he was at Stanford. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they attack it. And we might have as many as 200 points scored here in Seattle this afternoon. Now back to New York and Jim Nance. Really, two teams here, uh, UNLV and Iowa, that play the same up-tempo kind of a, a, a game, really. And, of course, Iowa likes to do a lot of pressing. I think the interesting question will be whether or not Iowa will maintain that full-court pressure for 40 minutes because UNLV is the kind of team that most people are afraid to press, so that'll be kind of interesting. Is it just me, but I get the feeling I haven't seen the best of UNLV in this tournament so far. They've actually been a little cold from the outside on a three-point shooting range, and if they are, it's going to be key that they act like Providence and go inside. You know, Jimmy, last week we actually took the time to wax poetic and some of the stories were believe it or not quite prophetic now that our team's number only six let's see how the lucky ones stayed in the mix march madness continued in earnest this week with 16 teams each hoping to peak they came with fans and mascots galore an odyssey that would leave they hoped to the final four florida's gators looked at home in the jersey swamp but syracuse ended norm sloan's dream with a romp the Orangemen unleashed a hero unlikely, a gangly Lebanese Greek they call Cycli. Then in a nightcap, young man Rivers just flowed, but the fighting Irish were no match for Tobacco Road. Down in Louisville, John Thompson beamed. His squad was plucky. Larry Brown was upset. His road would end in Kentucky. Was this the last we'd see of Danny Manning? The pros have money to burn, and those flames they keep fanning. But there was a fairy tale story at Freedom Hall. Unheralded Providence wants to dance at the ball. They dribbled past the tide with surprising ease, and Billy the Kid was shooting out the threes. Yasik Duda, no relation to Zippity. This was a team touched by serendipity. So poor wimp, your road stops here. We'll all miss wondering which jacket you'll wear. On Friday in Cincy, a bad night for young Meyer. The Bayou Bengals put the demons through hoops of fire. How does he do it each year, that Elmer Gantry? What tricks does Dale Brown use? What magic in his pantry? Their freak defense made the Tigers terrors. Proud DePaul crumbled with the comedies of errors. Later that evening, a matchup of...